Amen. Last week, we talked about trust. And Abraham covenant is three things that I want to cover. I want to cover faith, trust, and God faithfulness. Last week, we talked about trusting in God. Amen. We talked about trusting in him, obeying him. And we went over what was a covenant and we talk about Abram's journey. And we talked about the different things that he said, how he was, how God blessed Abram. Amen. And we know that Abraham was originally Abram until later on in his journey, God changed his name to Abraham. Amen. And his wife was Sarai, and then he changed her name to Sarah. And Abraham is known as one of the patriot. He is the patriarch, the founding father of the covenant. Amen. And so, do any of you remember what we said covenant is? Do anybody you remember? Amen. Do you, anybody want to tell us what we was talking about with covenant? Amen, mother. It is an agreement. Amen. Covenant. It is a promise from God. That's the first thing. It's also a binding agreement. Between at this time between God and Abram, but you know we can have a binding agreement with God too and have a covenant with Him, and it's also form a relationship. Amen. Apostle brought out a good point last week, and he was talking about how the original covenant was with God with um, Adam. Amen. With the first man, and he had a covenant with him, and then Adam sinned, and that covenant was broken. But how Abraham was like a bridge, and he was a part of a covenant that transitioned, you know, that brought us back to God. Isn't that wonderful? And you know Jesus Christ, Lord have mercy, our heavenly, our Lord and our Savior, he ended, well, he, you know, completed the relationship to bring us back in the covenant with God. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And so... A covenant, again, is a promise. First of all, we want to know that it's a promise. And God is a God that keeps his promises. Amen. Remember, we talked about a man's word and how we, um, back in the day, even more so than now, I hope so now, but how when a man tells you something, you can count on what he say. We can count on his word. His word was his bond. Amen. So it's a promise from God. A binding agreement. And that means, honestly, when God makes you a promise, he's a God that does not lie. That means that it really cannot be broken. Even when you break your part, he still, even though when we unperfect, he still have a covenant, you know, with us. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And it's agreement that form a relationship. Oh, that is so wonderful that we can experience a relationship with God. You know, some people, some religion, they believe in Buddha and other kind of religion. But you know what? You don't hardly ever hear them talking about they have a relationship with those kind of God. Amen. But we can have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. He desired to have a close relationship with you. He gave his only begotten son to die on the cross because what? He loved us that much. Amen. Okay. And another key point that I want to um, um, remind us is, is that covenant, the whole Bible, the entire Bible is built on covenants. The whole body, like we said, the whole body, the Bible and the body of Christ. From the beginning, it was Adam and Eve had a covenant with God. Then you go later on and we have Noah had a covenant with God. And then from Noah to Abraham had a covenant with God. From Abraham to Joseph. And then from Joseph until they became a nation with Moses. And then they had a covenant with God. And even though the children of Israel, they got in trouble and they were hard-headed and they went through different trials, God was always faithful. God was faithful to these people, just like he faithful to us. And then from Moses, we have King David. And then from King David, we have Jesus Christ, amen, having a covenant with God. 
So last week, again, we talked about the trusting and how we trust and obey God. And, you know, it says in Proverbs 3 and 5 and 6, just to go over a little bit review, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Amen. And then we went on and we talked about, for we are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So today we're going to talk a little bit about faith and God faithfulness. Okay? If you will, will you turn to Genesis, the 12th chapter? Genesis 12, chapter 12, verse 1. And it says, Now the Lord hath said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And see, here you go, what God really is testing Abram to see what he's going to obey. And he said, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. The Lord told Abram to go from your country to a land that I will show you. He said this, and we know this is the beginning of Abram's journey. But check this out. What the Lord was saying, he wants you to go from, from his past, from all his kin people, from his family, and everything that he knows. Now, as I researched, the land where Abram was from, it was a well-off place. It was very well-off, but they had a problem. They worshiped paganistic gods. They didn't believe in the true almighty God. Well, some of them may have, but not all of them. Majority of them worship other gods. And for God to choose this man to come from that particular place and to make him a promise and to tell him to go somewhere, and he didn't tell him where he was going. He just said, "From leave from thy father's house into a land that I will show you. So Abram had to trust him, and he had to have faith and believe God, first of all, because if he didn't believe God, I don't believe he would have packed up everything that he owned. Anytime you pack up everything you own and you move, that means you ain't going back where you come from. He packed up everything he had and his wife and even Lot, his nephew, and they moved to a different place. Amen? And so the Lord told Abram to go from your country to the land I will show you. And that was the start of the journey. And he said he was taking him basically to a promised land, but Abram don't even know what kind of land it's going to be. He just know he's going to trust and have faith and believe in God. He said, I will make of you a great nation, even though at this time this man was 75 years old, from, according to the research. And at this time, this man didn't have no child. And so for God to say that I will make of you a great nation, that's the extraordinary promise, right? And you know good and well, some of you, I don't know your age, but if anybody hitting 75, you probably wouldn't be thinking about having no children, right? <laughs> Amen. So he told him that I will make you a great nation. He said, I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. See, a lot of people look over there. He said, I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Isn't that wonderful? He didn't just choose this man to bless him, but he chose him so he can be a blessing to others. And that's how God chose each and every one of us, and he made covenant and relationship with us because he want us to, to um, bring forth other people and be a blessing to them. Amen. Isn't that wonderful that God, God is not a selfish God, that everything that he promised, even back in these days, some of the wonderful promise that he promised to us as well, even today. Amen. That's awesome. So we need to remember that God did not just choose us. He didn't just favor us. He didn't just set us apart for no reason, but he also chose us and set us apart for us to be a blessing to somebody else. So every day we shall wake up enthused like we said, this is the day that the Lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it. We shall wake up with that attitude. 
I guarantee if you wake up with that attitude, you will feel good. I don't care if you wake up feeling pain and arthritis and different things going on. You may went to sleep with stuff bothering you. But if you wake up and give God thanks and praise, how your day would be better. And you remember last week we was talking about when you go to different places, people will begin to notice it's something different about you. And they may even start questioning what different about you. And so when you let your light shine and you be the salt that Jesus saved for the land, for the earth, oh, what extraordinary things you can accomplish in your lifetime. Amen. Amen. Now, the entire Bible, like we said before, is built on covenants. And after he made this promise, um, going back, he said, bless you and make your name great. For those that came in, we're coming from Genesis, the 12th chapter, and we're talking about the Abrahamic covenant. And today we're going to focus on faith and God faithfulness. Amen. When God said he would bless Abram, think about it. He said, I make your name great. Now, for those who know the Bible, before this came to pass, there was a group of men, they decided they wanted to make their own reputation. They wanted to make their name great. And these was the men of Babel. I don't know if you, do you remember that story? The men of Babel? They wanted to make their own reputation, and they wanted to be great. Amen. But this point, God said he wanted to make Abram great. Amen. Amen. He said he wanted to make Abram great. Abram didn't seek out God to make him great. He chose Abram to make him great. Amen. And he said, um, again, the men of Babel, how they tried to make a name for themselves, a reputation. And you know, when you have a good name, that means you have a reputation, you have honor, and you have a good name. Amen. Again, we're coming for Genesis, the 12th chapter, and we're going over the Abrahamic covenant. Amen. And last week we talked about trust, and this week we're going to talk about faith and God faithfulness. Amen. And so we're discussing how the men of Babel in Genesis, they wanted to make a reputation and their name great for themselves. They didn't seek out God. But how God chose this particular man, Abram, and he promised him that in the second verse of Genesis 12 and 2, he said, I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And you know what? It is a good point, too. When we desire for greatness, that's not ungodly. But, and a good name is worth more than gold. Amen? A good name is worth more than gold. But a selfish pursuit of fame is not only adultery, but it make you an idol of yourself. Amen? We thank God for our leaders coming in. Amen. 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 And again, we're discussing the Abrahamic covenant. And today we're talking about faith and God faithfulness. And we're coming from Genesis chapter 12. And I was just mentioning how um, God promised Abram that he would make his name great. But also how we have to be careful. There's nothing wrong with desiring greatness for ourselves, And it's not ungodly. But a good name is worth more than gold. But a selfish pursuit of fame is not only adultery, but it make an idol of yourself. Amen? It's like you want to put all the attention on yourself instead of allowing God to make your name great. And there's a difference. When God do it, you can't go wrong. But when we try to do it, we'll get it wrong every time. Amen? So Abram allowed God, Abram, he became selfless, and he allowed God to make his name great. And so that you would be a blessing. Going back to he said in the second verse, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And we was discussing how not only did he promise this man that he would make his name great, but he promised him that you're going to be a blessing to others. Amen. And with this one man, all of us became great because God made a covenant and a promise to him later on. Amen. And it said in verse two, and it said, bless those that bless you and those that dishonor you. Well, and later on, it said, and I will curse you, curse them. But he made a promise. Let's go to the third verse. Got ahead of myself. And it say, 
And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Amen? And so let's talk a little bit about that. So the Lord was saying that you are a blessing. And not only are you a blessing, but you are a blessing from God to others. That's the difference. When God say you are a blessing, you are blessed to bless others. Amen. And that's how I feel about each and every one of us, that we are a blessing, again, to bless others. God didn't just choose us to keep all this loving in this, all this honor, all this faith, and all the promises that he done promised us just for ourselves. He chose us so we can be an instrument, a vessel to help somebody else. And just like we was talking about how it was a bridge from um, Abraham, we were saying how it was a bridge from Adam to Noah to Abraham to Joseph to Moses to T King David and then to Jesus. We can be a bridge for somebody else. Amen. We can help another family. We can help other people, other culture, move them on, be a bridge for them to know about Jesus. And then they can have a extraordinary covenant with God. Amen. So we got to learn how to go out and be faithful, how to go out. Because God faithful to us. What if God wasn't faithful to us? Where would we be? So just how God faithful to us, we should love him just as much as we love, um, just as much as he loved us. Amen. And you know, with God love, he said that I would know the ones that keep my commandments, the one who love me, but they keep my commands. And he commanded us to love. Amen. So in order for us to really do what the Lord told us to do, we need to love one another. Amen. That's one of the greatest commandments, to love one another. And so when God built this bridge and used us as a bridge really for other people, that we need to love no matter what. No matter what we do, no matter what we say, it should be in love. Amen. And so from this, it said that all the family of the earth shall be blessed. So that means you. That means me. Everybody can be blessed or blessed from this covenant. Amen. And then all of us have a relationship with God. And Abram, he obeyed. And as I said, he was 75 years old. And this probably, if you think about it, if God tell you it's 75 years old, you're going to have a great nation. He's going to make your name great. And at this time, like I said before, when you're 75, you ain't think about having no children. But still, God promised this man. He said, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shall be a blessing. Then he also said, I'm a blessing, honor you, that, um, those that bless you, and curse them that curses you. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So to me, don't that mean the same thing for us? He's going to bless us for the one who bless us, and he's going to curse those who dishonor us. Amen? And so Abram departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. This is verse 4. And Abram was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haram. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered and the soul that they had gotten in Haram. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, into the plain of Morah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram again, and he said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. Isn't that wonderful? That's verse 7. The Lord appeared unto Abram again. After he done went on his journey and he done made it to some of the promised land, he promised him. He said, Into thy seed, again, this is a 75-year-old man. And he haven't had a seed yet, but he promised him, unto thy seed, he haven't had a child yet, unto thy seed would I give this land. And he built an altar. And you know, speaking of altar, when Abram built this altar, Abram built it out of stone, Abram. And you know, later on in the verse, it's going to talk about how Abram went on and he pitched the tent. But, you know, a tent is temporary. You pick it up, you pack it up, you move on. But when he built the altar to God, it was permanent. He was making him let him know that this covenant is dear to my heart, and this is something that, you know, I want to be eternal. Amen? And, you know, in Hebrew, well, this is, too, like the beginning of the walk of faith. 
walk of faith come with conviction. What is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is eternal. So we got to hold lightly to what is seen and hold tightly to what is unseen. So at this time, Abram was holding lightly to his possession and different things because he had a tent. He didn't build a home. But when he made that altar to God, that was something for eternal. So when we have a covenant with God, when Jesus made that promise to us and he made that bridge and that special covenant when he died on the cross, that he promised us eternal life. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. So Hebrew also, Hebrew 13 talk about our altar, the altar. He said we have an altar every time we have the cross of Jesus. That's our altar. And every time we take communion, we return to that altar. So we got to think about it. Every time we take communion, we are reminded about that altar, that sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And again, that is an eternal blessing. Amen. So that is so awesome. At this time, I want to open if anybody have anything they want to add or anything they want to say about the lesson. Again, the three main points about the Abraham covenant we want to talk about is trust, faith, and God faithfulness. Last week, we talked about trust and the covenant, and we were doing the foundation of it. And this week, we're talking about faith and some of God faithfulness. So at this time, if anybody have anything they want to say, you may speak at this time. Thank you. I want to say good evening, everybody. Good evening. God bless everybody. I'm having a good time being in church, and I'm out for Christmas now. And this is, the more he let me out of school, the more I could get my blessing. Because the pastor said when we come in and doze, he was blessed. Amen. Anyway, this is what I wanted to say. And the Lord lied unto Abraham, and he said unto thee, I'm going to bless your seed. Now, God is blessing his seed. Whatever he, whatever God said he's going to do, he's going to do it. That's right. I just believe that. I just believe it. I'm just that crazy enough to believe what God said because we got we to gotta listen to what he got to say in the Bible. It's true because he, it's like the prophets. He's the, he believes the prophets of this Bible, Amen. of the book, I put it this way. So I just believe everything that God said, and I'm trusting in the Lord, and God just started blessing me. He's just blessing me. The more I do my tithes or whatever I have to do for God, he blessed me and blessed me. But I thank God for the little bit I did have to say. Amen. It's, it's um, better to say something and don't say nothing. Amen. You know, because that's, what, that's what the leader said. So I'm going to do what the leader said. The more Amen. I keep doing, the more I'm going to get keep blessed. Amen. You don't want it, I, bl I get it. Amen. God bless y'all. Amen. Amen. Give a hand clap for her. We appreciate that, Deacon Cole. Amen. Amen. We appreciate you and your wife for speaking. Anybody else want to have something to say? We want to thank God for my pastor, my local church, Bishop Gladys Hall. Amen. <laughs> I thank and praise God for being here tonight. I thank Amen. God for Jesus and our great leader, the Apostle Felix Revels and First Lady. Amen. And, and you know, just looking at um, Abram. And, you know, praise God. Before I say that. I'm a person of faith. I believe in talking faith. Amen. And you know, in, in talking faith, pray the Lord. Uh, I, 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 faith is a, a strong persuasion that everything that God said is the absolute truth. Amen. Amen. And so when we look at Abram, here's a man that had never heard the voice of God. Amen. Praise God. But when God spoke, he believed what God said. And you know, praise God, how much better would we be if we would hear, if we would just believe? Amen. But he heard God said, Abraham told Abraham to move, to move from something where he was comfortable at. You know, and, and, and today, we, when we get comfortable in a place, we don't want to get out of it. Amen. But here it is. Now, this man got to get up, and he got to move. He got to go to a place that he didn't know nothing about. But Abraham believed God. He believed in the voice that he heard. Man. And I thank God because when we're talking about believing in the voice that he heard, Man. how many of us, praise God, that God done spoke to, 
to do something and we fail to do it. Amen. We have to look at it, pray the Lord, because God tell us to move and a lot of time we don't move. Amen. But when we look at Abraham, when God told Abraham to move, Abraham didn't ponder it. He just moved. He obeyed God. And that's to me the most... The important thing is that Abraham was a man of obedience. Man. God made a covenant with him, and, 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 but he obeyed what God said. Man. You know, when she was reading, in, in, um, she was saying that he said, uh, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country. He didn't tell him, pray God, to just move to another little place. Amen. But he told him to get completely out the country. Amen. He said, get out the country and, and, and get from around your kinfolk. Mm -hmm. Pray the Lord. <laughs> you know how it is if somebody tell me, leave all my kinfolk. Amen. I'll be saying, Lord, Lord, are you sure that was you? <laughs> <laughs> you know we would. We would be saying, Lord, it, it, now is that you? Especially when he said, leave your kinfolk, leave your father's house unto a land that I, he had to move out on faith. He had to move out on trust because he said to go to a land, I'm going to show you. He didn't give Abraham no hints. Amen. <laughs> he didn't give Abraham a, a picture of where he was going. He said, well, you move, I'm going to show you. And you know, when we look at that, how many of us would be willing to move for God like that? Amen. Amen. And then God made him a promise. I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Praise God. And I heard listening at that uh, Minister Monica talking about being a blessing. You know, God promised Abraham uh, a man that didn't have any children, didn't even see no prospects of having no children. But here God is making Abraham a promise. And then when God made Abraham that promise, Abraham didn't balk at the promises of God. But Abraham obeyed God to the fullest. And to me, that's what we got to do. You know, I look at Abraham, pray the Lord, but bro, it was just a pattern for us. It's a pattern, pray the Lord, that we got to obey. We got to move. We got to get up and we got to do something. Because I can read about Abraham all I want to, but it is, ain't nothing but words until I begin to move. Till I began to do, until I began to obey. And he let me know, we got to just obey. Obey when we understand it. And that's saying a lot. Obey when we understand. And obey when we don't understand. Amen. If I believe and I trust God, and, and, and I'm going to say this, if the leader tell us something, amen, we got to believe God. We got to trust God that he is telling us what God say. Amen. I tell him, I, I, I pre, I'm going to shut it up. <laughs> but I teach my church, amen, and I know that somebody might look at this a little funny. I teach my church. And, and I remember when this coronavirus first started, an apostle stood and apostle prayed that God would cover us. Amen. And do you know what that prayer meant to me? I don't have to be scared. I don't have to be fearful. Amen. And I teach my church, praise God, that God put a blood covering over us. And I believe in the blood covering that God put over us through the man of God praying. Amen. Amen. And I tell them, praise God, all you got to do is believe it. Somebody said something about the court advisors, you ain't got it. You ain't going to get it because the prayers of the man of God has covered us. That's trusting God. That's moving out on what God said. And we as God people, we got to move out on what God say. We can't move out in doubt. 
We can't be walking around fearful, but we got to move out in faith. Amen. Amen. If faith is believing everything, every word, I tell them every word that God say is true. It's the absolute truth. Amen. And if God tell us, we stand on that. We have to stand on the word of God. Amen. Even in Abraham's time, pray God, he didn't have the Holy Ghost. But he stood on what God said. We got the Holy Ghost today. And a lot of us can't stand on what God said. But we got to stand on what God said. Amen. She hit so many positive points. Amen. But she was talking about how we got to stand on the faith. Amen. How this was a man that, like she say, never heard God's voice. And a lot of us, we done heard God's voice and still be disobedient. And, you know, last week we talked about trusting and obeying him. Amen. This man did not mumble. This man did not even question it. You know, sometimes I hear the Lord and I have to ask him three, four times to repeat what he said. To make sure it's the Lord. Because I don't want to get in trouble saying something and it don't come from him. Amen. But this man did not even, in the word, they say he did not question. He just moved out on faith. Amen. And like I say, we study, he um, left his kindred. He left his family. And he left the country. And he moved forward. Amen. A lot of us, we need to stop looking in the rearview mirror and just continue to move forward. Amen. Amen. And like she pointed out too, whatever God has promised us, you, it has to come to pass. He doesn't leave any details undone, and he is not a God that he should lie. Amen. We all have a covenant with God. Some of us don't realize we have a covenant with God, but we do. Once you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that was a binding agreement. That was a covenant. That was a promise. And everything attached to Jesus, it belongs to you. So that's why we need to study the word, study the Bible, and we need to look and, you know, take these promises in and really believe them. Because if we really believe them, we'll put action to what we believe. Because most of the time, anything we do, we don't do it without first believing it. Amen. Amen. And we're going to let Mother speak. Amen. Thank God for being here tonight. Thank God for everybody. Amen. Pastor, uh, I was uh, asking uh, First Lady, I asked she had been a nun at all. And um, because I, I because I remember back in the day, I I really used that anointing oil. Amen. And uh, so she gave me some. And I had went to the doctor. They said that uh, my thyroid was doing something, you know, with some points off. And they weren't worried about it. They said they were just going to keep an eye on me. But I began to seek me another doctor, <laughs> you know, so they could run some tests and just see what was going on. And so... Uh, I finally got a doctor to check me, and they did my lab work, and it was a, like a sheet of paper, front and back. I I made 100. Wow. <laughs> All my lab work was just fine. Amen. And I believe it come from me helping um, my pastor and his wife. Amen. Right. Amen. They my children, but I believe in helping them. Amen. You know, because God showed me in a dream that he was a very, and her, that a very important people. Man. Even though that's my daughter, you know, I have a job. I substitute teach. I could, so I could work every day if I want to. <laughs> but I, I put my time with them because, you know, this is what God wants me to do, and this is what I want to do. I want to help them in whatever area, if it's at the church or at the house or wherever, whatever I can do for them. I want to do that. Amen. Because, see, we got to realize uh, God sees stuff. And when stuff happens, so many people sick and all like that. And, and I, you know, we need to try to do better. Amen. We do. We need to reach out and start doing better and, and just stop sitting around and uh, all like that. Because God will bless us. I tell you, you know, back in the day, when you would tell your testimony about your finances before you could leave out the door, somebody would be right now. Trying to bar something. <laughs> Y'all know that. <laughs> Man. Yeah. But you know, the thing is now, 
That's why I think a lot of people like I think it was you last week asked did y'all wanna say uh I think it was your mom said you were saying that did anybody wanna tell about the blessing? Some kind of Amen. way you were saying Amen. And I was looking at a few people and they didn't move and I know they <laughs> I said, they ain't going to move about right, right that because they don't <laughs> want nobody asking for their money. <laughs> but uh, really, God has really blessed me. And, uh, I, and uh, I mean, he, he see, God see about me. Amen. I might not look like it, but he see about me. Amen. And I know it came from me, and it come from me helping them. Because right. God showed it to me more than one time. That these are special people. We we, we taking them lightly, but mm-hmm. these are special people. If you got if you got anything that you can do to help the man or woman of God, yes. do it, right. and you will see God will bless you. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Give a big hand clap for her. Amen. And again, she was making points about being a blessing. How God used her as a blessing. She blessed them, the leaders, and helping with them, and how He has blessed her. Amen. And also, I just want you to point out, because um, we was talking about, um, like she was saying, we take our leaders sometimes for granted, amen. Sometimes when we're so used to being taken care of, we can really take it for granted. When we're so used to having, like, mom and dad cooking breakfast and everything, cooking the three meals a day. I hope some of y'all still getting three meals a day. Amen. But and clothing us and doing different things, we take it for granted. But how God and bless us with leaders, we cannot take for granted. Amen. Like he said last week, he was talking about how um, different other leaders, how they calling him and how he got to encourage them. We got to remember to encourage him amen we got to remember to thank him for all what he doing and how he praying and how he being a covering for us like um bishop um teach us in moultrie you know god got to come to her first about us so think about he over this whole incorporation god's gonna go to him first and then the rest of us later amen so we need to take time to honor them and take care of them they are young and we thank god for them being young but we want them to stay healthy and young amen we want to be able to be a help. We don't want them stressed out. Because if they stressed out, they can't give us the best. And if they can't give us the best, that means they probably can't heal the best from God because they stressed out. Amen. So we want them to heal the best from God, and we want them to share the best with us. So we need to give them our best too. Amen. Amen. Because we got a relationship with them too. And I know some of us, we can't get close to them like we want to, but we can constantly keep them in prayer. I remember um, back in the day, Apostle um, Felix said this, and I'll never forget it. He said, you may not trust me, but trust the God in me. Amen. So we trust God, so trust the God in him, and trust God is using him. Amen. Amen. It ain't no question about it. He is using him. He chose him to be that leader, and at a young age, they accepted it. Amen. Because Lord knows, some of us would have been running and still running to this day. So we thank God for them. Amen. Amen. And we're going to go ahead and begin. We're going to wrap up for tonight. But I want to make this key point that we have a covenant with God. And in Revelation 3 and 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Jesus is ready to meet your needs. He said, My Father and I will come in and eat with you. That's a covenant statement. So you need to hold on to that. He said, I'm right there knocking. If you want me, I'm right here. Just open the door. Amen. And he said, if you let him in, how Jesus will come in and help you. But you must trust, listen, and obey. And so I want to leave that with you. Remember, we're going to trust, have faith, believe in God, faithfulness. Amen. Now, at this time, if you would, we're going to stand and we're going to have a congregational prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for you coming in and blessing us today, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we have a personal relationship, a covenant with you, oh God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done and all what you're doing and what are you going to do, oh God. Heavenly Father, we thank you that even though things are going on that may not seem right and may be dark, but that you keep us covered in your blood, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for regulating our mind. If anybody has some disturbance going on in their mind, anything mentally, physically, or emotionally. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you bring balance right now. 
Holy Spirit, we ask that you stir it up in us right now and you follow us even when we go home. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you aboard with us, that you never leave us nor forsake us. That's what you promised. So we ask you to come home with us, oh Lord. We ask you to be with us in our cars, protect us on a dangerous highway. We ask you that you go with us on our jobs tomorrow, oh God. We ask that you go with us on the school ground tomorrow, oh God. We thank you for covering us in your blood and protecting us from this pandemic, oh God. And we thank you for continuing to cover us, oh God. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the refreshing right now, God. Holy Spirit, moving among the congregation, oh God. Let everybody leave here refreshed and renewed, oh God. Let everybody, let all the distractions and the trouble be cast upon you, oh God. We cast our cares upon you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, oh God. We ask for more wisdom how to love one another. Want more wisdom how to help one another. You said if we ask of wisdom that you give it to all of us liberally, God. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for the knowledge. Thank you for the understanding. Thank you for the abundance of love, oh God. We thank you that we are connected with you and we are so ready to live that abundant life. God, we give you all the praise and the glory and we say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us for Bible study. If you have any questions or comments about the lesson, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at efvm4460 at gmail.com. Send us a DM or post your question in the comment section below. We look forward to hearing from you. Greetings, everybody. My name is Pastor A, and I pastor at Christ Deliverance Temple, Columbus, Georgia. We are here as part of Evangelical Faith Vision Ministries. We are so excited about what God is doing in this ministry. We want to challenge you to sow because this place is fertile ground. We know that God has given a seed to you and you want to plant it in this ground. You want to be a part of what God is doing here. God has given us manifold testimonies of miracles, signs, and wonders, and you want to be a part of it. We want to challenge you to name your seed, claim what God is doing. I speak in declaring decree that God is getting ready to give a supernatural increase just because of your seat. So we want you to click the link at the bottom. There's a link down there. Givelify. Give on Givelify. You can give on PayPal. You can send us an old-fashioned check. But whatever it is, we want you to be a part of this. Get in on this sword. The time is now. Don't wait. We declare in decree that we'll never be broke another day in our life because we got a seed in our hand. We talk to our money at Evangelical Faith Vision Ministry. We say, see, go, grow, and return. See, go, grow, and return. See, go, grow, get the overflow, and bring it on back. You need to be a part of it. So, 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 so. God bless.